morning everyone. Parang tulog pa po. Good morning po. Amen. And once again, we just give God our very best clap offering. Amen and amen. So, it's a Christmas season and next week po, anong, so next Sunday, ano na po meron tayo? It's our Christmas day. Kaya po pakibati muli ang inyong katabi ng Merry, Merry Christmas. Amen. Kuya Bong, parang medyo mahina yung mic ko. Saan yung isang mic? Pacheck nga ng isang mic, palit muna kami. So, uh, sa next Sunday po, makikita-kita po ba tayo dito? Amen. Sana po, uh, kung, of course, meron po mga tao po na nakabakasyon. Pero yung mga hindi pa po nagbabakasyon, sama-sama po tayo dito. It's good na we celebrate our Christmas Day dito po in God's house. Amen po ba doon? So, hindi pa po tapos ang ating each one bring one commitment. So, last hura na po natin to for the year. So, pakisama po ang inyong friends, pakisama po ang inyong family, and we're gonna celebrate Christmas here in God's house. Amen? Amen. Sige po, palakpakan po muli natin ang ating Panginoon. Hallelujah. And today, are you excited to hear God's Word? Amen. Parang mahina ulit. Are you excited to hear God's Word? Amen. I'm also excited to preach to you God's Word. But be, before we proceed there, I would just like to ask you again one question. Kung sa inyong buhay po ngayon, what has been your hardest battle? Ano kaya yun? Siguro, siguro for all those years, for all those moments, ano kaya ang inyong, ano kaya yung ating hardest battle in life right now? So hardest siya siguro, hindi natin siya mapagtagumpayan, nahirapan talaga tayo, no? Ano kaya yun? So for me, isa pong hardest battle that I came through in life was during my College years. Sino pong nakatanggap na po ng ganitong exam? So may, ma- may mathematical exam. Sino dito favorite niya ang math exam? So ako po, wala po akong choice. Engineering po yung kinuha ko. So sa pagpasok ko po ng engineering, math exam pambihira. So ang style ko po kasi sa pag math exam, ang gagawin ko po, so, uh, first page, mga four pages yan usually. So sa first page, medyo mahihirap. So lalaktawan ko muna. So, lipat ako next page. So, wala pa rin ako masagutan. So, third page, uh, parang wala pa rin ako masagutan. Ha? So, hanggang sa umabot na po ako sa last page, nakalagay na end of exam. So, pagtingin ko po sa, sa test paper, lahat po wala pa pong sagot. Kasi hirap na hirap po ako sa math exam. So, isa po yan sa aking uh, hardest battle in life, really finishing college years sa engineering. So, siguro po, iba sino dito mga youth pa. Di ba, mga kabataan, nagka-college ngayon. So, God bless sa inyo. <laughs> Yan po. And siguro, in a more serious note, siguro po, tapos na po tayo sa college years. But maybe right now, our hardest battle is about our family. Something from within us, something from within our hearts. Siguro, we came from a broken home, from a broken family. Wow, how hard is that? And siguro, right now, we may be complete in our house, pero... Hindi naman tayo nag-uusap-usap, broken pa rin. Or maybe at this point, dahil hindi po tayo nag-uusap-usap, maybe we're at the point now that our family will be breaking apart. So siguro this is our hardest battle in life. Why is it our hardest battle? Why? Because siguro iniisip pa rin na, pa lang natin, wala na tayong magawa. We could do nothing about it. Or probably we're trying to do something about it, but as we try and try and try, Wala pa rin nangyayari. Nothing is happening. We could do nothing about it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna continue our series. So nagbigla tayo nagka-series about the man of God. Sino po ulit yung man of God last week? Wala, wala na nakaalala nung preaching natin. Ha? Sino po ulit yun? Di ba po si, ano yun, si Elijah? We talked about Elijah. He's a man of God because God's favor was upon him. And right now, this is our title, The Hardest Battle. So ano kaya yung hardest battle, yung college exams kaya, hard battle na yun? Yung family kaya natin, is that our hard battle right now? Pero sa, sa isang man of God, what could be his, his, uh, his hardest battle? So if, you're gonna, if you have your Bibles with you, we could open our Bibles in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 to 43. And it says here, Then Elijah said to Ahab, He's the king of Israel at that time. He said, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel 
Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again, go again. So in this passage, you know what? What is God telling us right now here? Because last week, di ba? Kung maalala po natin yung preaching last week, it was about the dryness in the land, di ba? So very dry yung feeling ng mga tao. It was really drought, tag tag tuyo sa panahon nila. And God told Elijah, today, dryness will end in your life. Today, the drought will end in Israel. Kaya pumunta ka don sa hari. Go to the king of Israel. Puntahan mo siya. At sabi po at at ang sabi po ni ang ginawa po ni uh, ni Elijah no sabi ni Lord dadating ako. What did he do? He worshiped the Lord. Pumunta po siya on Mount Carmel and what did he do? He worshiped the Lord. Why? Because that's how we welcome God's presence in our lives. Amen po ba doon? At gusto po ba natin matanggap ang presence ni Lord ngayon? Amen. Sige nga po, pwede natin bigyan ng palakpak ang Panginoon as we welcome God's presence in this house. Amen and amen. So he told his servant, kasi nasa bundok po sila, sabi niya, look toward the sea. So this is the sea. Sabi niya, tignan mo nga yung dagat. May sign na ba ni Lord? Nandyan na ba? May, may miracle ba si Lord? Nandyan na ba si Lord? May sign ba siya kahit anong sign? Look at it, servant. Puntahan mo. Kaya lang bumalik po yung servant sa kanya. Elijah, wala eh. Wala ang nangyayari. Normal lang. But Elijah said, go again. Go back again. So sometimes, and most of most of our times, usually this is our hardest battle. Siguro, yes, may problems tayo at work. We have our problems in school. Maybe we have our problems here in church or with our families. But one hardest battle that we go through is our time in worship. Sino po nakaka-relate dyan? Di ba minsan, as we do our devotion, as we sing praises alone, tayo lang po sa bahay, parang minsan, gagawin natin, minsan hindi. Minsan po, when we go here in church, of we raise up our hands, minsan hindi tayo makatalon, nakapeg yung paan natin sa ground, hindi tayo makagalaw-galaw, parang, parang pigil tayo mag-worship, parang wala, wala, ayoko magtaas ng kamay. Minsan, ayaw pa natin magsimba. Diba? Minsan, nalilate pa tayo. Pakitanong ngayon, katabi mo, late ka ba? Ayan. So, most of us naman, maaga ngayong Sunday, di ba? So, yan yung worship natin. And sometimes, as we worship, worship God, worship God, ano nangyayari? There is nothing. We could not feel His presence. Hindi tayo makaiyak. Hindi tayo makataas ng kamay. Wala tayo sa mood. Mm. Ang hirap, di ba? Ang hirap mag-worship ng ganun. Wala tayo sa mood. Hirap na hirap tayo. There's nothing. But God will tell us, go again. Go again. Sige, worship ka ulit. Simba ka ulit, uh, mag-worship ka today. Tomorrow, worship again. Luhod mo ulit yan. Iyak mo kay Lord. Next Sunday, simba ka ulit. Worship tayo. Kaya lang, what happens again? There is nothing. And go again. Kaya lang, tinatambad na tayo. So we feel that dryness in our lives. And before we proceed with God's word, para i-bless tayo Lord ngayon at mawala yung dryness sa buhay natin, tayo po ay manalangin muna. And let's bow down heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. We love you so much, God, and we just need your presence today. And Lord God, early this morning, Lord God, hindi mo na kami binigo, Lord God. You've allowed us, Lord God, to feel your presence. And right this moment, we believe, Lord God, that you're going to move in this place. Lord God, you're going to move, Lord God, in this heart, Lord God, today. At ikaw po ay lubusang kikilos at mangungusap na naman sa aming buhay. And Lord God, today we just ask for your presence. Lord God, today we just ask, Lord God, for you to come in our lives. You don't want to do this by our own strength, not by might nor by power, but only by your spirit. And Lord Jesus Christ, you know, Lord God, our dry hearts today. And you know, Lord God, you're going to move in our lives. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen and Amen. Once again, sige po, palakpangan po muli natin ang ating Panginoon. So what happened? What happened to that? That was actually the end of the story. Pero... Paano ba nagsimula yan? Where was Elijah coming from? So let's go back to verse 1. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1, ito po yung story niya. And what happened? And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. May salita ang Panginoon para kay Elijah. In the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. 
So ito na po, God was really telling Elijah, I have a promise for you. I have a command for you. Go to the king of Israel because today, the dryness will end in your life. So tuwan-tuwa siguro si Elijah. But what is this battle that Elijah is facing right now? So this is his prelims. Kung ano sa exams, di ba? May prelims. So this is the Elijah's preliminary, pre, preliminary battle. So ano po bang hinaharap niya? You know what? First, there was three years of dryness in the land. So, so simula do sa preaching uh, last Sunday hanggang ngayon, three years po pala yon. Three years na tagtuyo, three years na dry na dry, three years na hindi nila maranasan ng presence ni Lord. So they were, Elijah was in a great sacrifice. Kasi man of God siya eh. So dapat, exempted na sana siya doon. Dapat spared na siya doon. Dapat hindi na dry yung feeling niya. Kaya lang kasama pa rin siya. And you know what? In the land of Israel, what was happening, there was a massacre of prophets. Lahat po ng profeta ng Diyos, lahat ng prophets ni Lord, they were all killed. Lahat po sila pinapatay nung hari. Yan po hinaharap ni, King El- ni Elijah and he was experiencing this great risk. And finally, ano po hinaharap ni Elijah, you know what? Sa lahat ng prophets, Sino ang gustong patayin? You know what? Si Elijah ang favorite nilang patayin. Elijah is Israel's most wanted. And there is sure death for Elijah. So yan po ang kanyang hinaharap. There's great sacrifice, great risk, and sure death for the life of Elijah. And you know what? Right now, he has all the reasons not to follow God. He has all the reasons not to worship God. Bakit? Ito na eh. Di ba kung tayo yan, tayo yung sinabihan ni Lord, oh, punta ka doon, kaya lang mamamatay ka. Di ba? How hard is it for us to follow God? At nadagdagan pa po, he has a contemporary po doon sa loob ng Israel, another prophet whose name is Obadiah. And this is what the prophet Obadiah told him. In verse 13 to 14, it says here, You know what? Was it not reported to my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? How I hid 100 men of the Lord's prophets, 50 to a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Yan po sabi ni Obadiah, another prophet, another man of God inside Israel. So Elijah and Obadiah, you know what, they having the, they're having the same situation. They are having the same dilemma. Bakit? Look at what I did, sabi ni, sabi ni Obadiah. I've sacrificed a lot. Hindi mo ba alam nung pinatay ni Jezebel lahat nung, nung mga prophets? I did something about it. So I have this great sacrifice. What did I do? I hid them to a cave. I fed them with water and food. Pambihira, Elijah. I did so much already for them. This is great risk. So much risk that I have done. Tapos ngayon sasabihin mo, tell your master Elijah is here. What will happen? He will surely kill me. Papatayin ako nung hari. So they have the sit- same situation. They have great sacrifice, great risk, sure death for the both of them. But you know what? They have a different response. Bakit si Obadaya ayaw na? Ayoko, ayoko. Uh, I don't want to be part of your plan. Why? Because Obadaya's worship is focused on sacrifice. Sabi niya, hindi, marami na ako nagawa eh. Ito na oh. I've done so much for the Lord. I've done so much for the people. I've done so much. I've sacrificed so much of my life. Ayoko na. Ayoko na hanggang dito na lang ako. So, si Elijah, what made Elijah worship God till the very end? What made Elijah go forward whatever God says he will follow? What made him do that? Why? Because a worship, a worship focused on obedience is unstoppable. Kapag ang worship po natin ay gusto lang sumunod ng sumunod sa Panginoon, you're gonna be unstoppable. Pag ang worship mo, it doesn't, it does, doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter kung ano ang, ang nagawa mo, it doesn't matter about your sacrifices, pambihira, your worship will be unstoppable. Amen? Amen. Sige nga po, palakpangan po natin ng Panginoon dyan. Why? Kasi it usually happens to us, we worship because, Lord, ang dami ko na nagawa, Lord eh. Lord, I go here in church every Sunday, Lord. I try to be on time on Sunday. I, I, I serve the Lord. I preach every Sunday, Lord. That's hard already. Lord, hanggang doon na lang ako. If our worship is about our sacrifices, but if our worship is focused on obedience, your worship is gonna be unstoppable. Amen.
Amen. So what happened next? So Elijah went to the king. And po nangyari? Elijah went to the king. And it says here, Then Elijah said, As the Lord lives, in verse 15 to 16, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet with Ahab and told him, and Ahab met. Ahab went to meet Elijah. Nakita po sila ng hari, walang makakapigil sa aking pagpupuri. I'm gonna obey the Lord no matter what. Sana po ganyan din ang ating worship sa Panginoon. So this is the next that had happened in verse 20 to 21. It says here, So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel. Lahat po pinatawag ni King Ahab, all the Israelites, all the Hebrews, come here to me. Nandito si Elijah. And it says, And gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal, yung Diyos Diyosan po nila, their God, then follow Him. But the people answered him not a word. So here comes Elijah in front of the people, telling them what to do, their situation. And ako po ay na interesaduan sa word na to, the word falter. So ano ba tong falter na to? So when we look at it in the Hebrew word, its its transliteration is pasak, which means to halt or to limp or to pass over. Halt meaning to stop. Limp means na matalisod. Bakit na naman tayo matatalisod into two opinions? And why do we need to pass over? Why do we need na dadaan pa rin tayo in two opinions? And what, is, what are these two opinions? This is, are the two opinions. So it is God versus what the world says. So laging ganyan yan eh. The God and the world. So God says, what is God telling us right now? Worship. Pakisabi nga sa yung katabi, Worship. This is what God is, where God is leading you to do right now, to worship whatever you're going through right now, whatever happened yesterday, last week. You came here in church not to meet me, not to meet your friends. You came here to what? To worship. But what will the world tell us? What will Baal tell us? What will the, uh, the evilness of this world tell us? You know what? Stop worshiping. Stop worshiping. Don't, don't worship anymore. You have a lot of problems. Stop worshiping. It's all right. Not, no harm done if you don't stop. If you stop worshiping, if you don't go to church, it's all right. No problems. But God will tell us once again, you know what? What's, what, is, what is God telling us right now? Worship. Still worship. tayo, still worship. If you're not in the mood, still worship. But, the, but the, the world will tell us, no fall into sin. It's all right. No harm done. It's simple. Just try. Just try something simple and enjoy it. Sige. Fall into sin. It's all right. Nothing bad gonna happen to you. But what will God tell us again? What will God tell us again? Worship. Worship. Worship God. Worship me. But the world will invite us. The world will tell us once again, wow, don't worship God. He's not real. Worship me. Worship the world. Worship the material things of this world. Yan ang sinasabi. And when God is telling us, when Elijah was telling the people, why are you faltering in two opinions about God? And here we go, there's this world. Why are we always in this position Now we could not decide if we're gonna follow God, follow God. If we're gonna follow Baal, follow Baal. Follow the world. Kaya po nahihirapan po yung mga tao. So, this is what Elijah did. Hinamon niya po yung mga Israelites. Hinamon niya po yung mga, nung mga prophets ni King Ahab, yung mga prophets ni Baal. And sabi niya, oh, let's have a battle. Let's have a showdown. So it's Elijah against 450 prophets of Baal. So yun po yung tsura. So nasan ba si, si Elijah dyan? Lahat po yan ay prophets ni Baal. At andito lang po si Elijah. Just one. Just one person in front of a whole crowd against him. Everyone against Elijah. Wow, parang tayo, kung tayo po yan, di ba? Parang atras na lang tayo. Ang daming, ano, daming kaaway. Ako lang mag in front of the battle. Why am I here? But sabi niya, no. I'm, you, all of you, 450 prophets of Baal against me, Elijah. And what will we do? Sabi niya, prepare your altar. I'll prepare my altar. 
get a bull for yourself, I'm gonna get a bull for myself. Cut your bull, just like that. Cut your bull, put it in your altar, I'll do mine, I'll do my own thing, and what will happen? Don't put fire on it. Don't put fire. Ang gagawin po natin, whoever is the one true and living God, kaya niyang paapoyin yung altar na yan. Kung sino ang Diyos na makakapagpaapoy ng altar na to, ng mga nakalagay dyan, siya ang tunay at buhay na Diyos. So sabi ng mga Israelites, sige, good kami dyan, laban kami. So what did, the, the, what did the Israelites do? What did the 450 prophets do? They did everything that they could. They worshiped Baal, they sang songs, they gave all their hearts, they gave it all to the Baal, they worshiped, they danced, they sang, they did everything. So yan po yung tune nila, they, they did all their incense. But what happened? Guess what happened? Umapoy po ba yung sacrifice po nila? It didn't set on fire. Nothing was happening. Sa pag, pag-worship nila sa mundo, sa pag-worship nila sa, sa Baal, nothing happened. Kaya po, in-encourage pa po sila lalo ni Elijah. At sabi po ni Elijah in verse 27, it says, And so it was, at noon time, kasi from morning to noon, night, noon time, this is what happened, that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud! Cry aloud! Uso na po wala yung ano, sarcasm nung panahon na yun. Cry aloud! For he is a God. Di ba Diyos yan? Di ba? Ba't hindi umaapoy? Either he is meditating. Siguro po nag-iisip po siya na paano kaya ito papaupuyin? Ano kayang magandang style para paupuyin? So kung buhay yung Diyos mo, cry aloud. Si, uh, laksan mo. So siguro, he is busy. Siguro marami siyang kinakausap. Hindi niya kayang pagsabay-sabayin ang kanilang ang mga tao. Or he is on a journey. Siguro, Pasko rin po nung panahon na yun, nag, uh, nag-bakasyon siya sa somewhere out there, and or perhaps he is sleeping that he must be awakened. Baka tulog yung Diyos nyo, sabi niya dun sa mga 450 prophets, kasi there's nothing happening. So what did, the, what did the 450 prophets do? They cried out all the more, they cried out aloud, mas lalo po nila sinigaw, they sacrificed a lot. Uh, kinat po nila yung mga sarili nila till blood was gushing out all over the place. But till that point, guess what happened? Guess what happened to them? It says in verse 29, it says, And when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, but there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Wala. Nothing happened. So, you could just imagine the faces of those 450 prophets doing all those things. Wala. Frustrated sila. All the people, all the Israelites who were watching, bilib na bilib sila kay Baal, bilib na bilib sila sa Diyos Diyosa nila. And while they were watching, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Why? Because this is what we did. This is what we actually did, what they actually did. So, God versus Baal. And somehow, we said, Ah, God, mamaya ka na lang sa buhay ko. I'm gonna do what the world says first. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start worshiping. Uh, I, I'm gonna stop worshiping. I'm gonna fall into sin. I'm gonna worship the world. I'm gonna worship Baal. But what happened? When we stopped worshiping, when we followed what the world said to us, nung tayo na po yung may kailangan sa kanya, nung tayo na po yung lumalapit sa mundo kay Baal, what happened? There was no voice, not a single voice to help us, to help you and me. And when the, when the devil, when the world, when Baal told us, uh, fall into sin, sige, enjoy natin, enjoy sin, sige, happy happy na tayo, we met new friends, and then when we were there, when we were, when we were needing them, what happened? No one answered, not a single one, wala na yung friends natin. Wala na tayong kakilala. Wala na may kilala sa atin. No one answered. And when we started worshiping the world, sabi niya, worship me kasi. When we worship the world, when we worship Baal, what happened? We gave our lives. We gave our all. Pinagpalit natin si God for, for, this, for this world. What happened? When we needed help, no one paid attention. No one. As in, No voice, no word, no word, nothing, nada. Nothing was happening. 
and all the Israelites, all the Israelites who believe na believe sila kay Baal, were so frustrated. They were all down from bihira. Kaya po ito na po yung sinabi ni Elijah sa kanila. In verse 30 it says, Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. Come near to me. Diga nga. So parang inakbayan niya yung mga tao. Come near to me. All the Israelites, all who came from God, come near to me. Come near to me. And it says, So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Why? Because it was destroyed, it was broken down, and here comes Elijah, a man of God, who would want to repair God's temple. And how did he repair it? In verse 31 to 32 it says, And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two seas of seed. So yun po yung ginawa niya. He repaired it. He tried to build it up once again. And sometimes this is already our temple. This is already our altar. Sige bro, next. This is what we've been believing upon. That our God, He doesn't answer. He has no voice. I keep on calling, I keep on calling, but ganun, walang sagot. I, I cried already. I did everything I could, but no answer. I did everything. I sacrificed a lot. And what happened? No one paid attention. But God says right now, you know what? Di kasi ako yan eh. That's not me. I'm a God who hears you. I'm a God who knows you. I'm a God who knows your situation. I'm a God who hears your cry today. I know what you're going through. So God is erasing all these things. This is not me. You thought that I, I was that person? No. I'm not that. And you? This one? You know what? This is also not you. Israelites, Church of God, Christians. This is not who you are. God tells you. Hindi ikaw yan. Burahin mo yan sa isipan mo ngayon. And what, what, did, what did Elijah do to them? In verse 33 to 35 it says, and he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood and said, Fill four water pots with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. So parang, kung ako po yan, I'm gonna think about it. Are you crazy? Kasi, papaapuyin nga natin yung sacrifice. Yung bull, we were gonna set it ablaze. But, I'm gonna pour water on it? Am I hearing it right? Are you serious? Yes, I pour water. says Elijah, pour water on it. Sabi niya, so they poured water on it. Then he said it, do it a second time. Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. So kung sila po, okay. Sige, sunod lang ako. But here comes it another time. He said, do it a third time. Do it again. Do what I'm telling you. Pour water on it. Maybe they're confused, they're questioning. Sige na nga, ano ba ang gagawin ko? Ito talaga. So this is what they did. Do it a third time and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar and he also filled the trench with water. So bakit ganun? Why are, why are they led to do that? That crazy thing, that ridiculous thing? Why? Why? Because what happened... The trench was filled with worship coming from their obedience. And I'm gonna bring you back to who you are. I'm gonna bring you back to what God says. This is what God says. Worship. Worship me. Do it the first time. It may sound ridiculous. It may sound crazy. People outside these walls may not understand your worship. They may say, 
you're saying hallelujah, praise God, amen, amen. They may be uh, looking at you funny, you're doing that. Do it a second time. Worship. Worship. And people are getting mad. Your, your church is so noisy. Stop that. The world will tell you, back down. Don't do that. Your family will tell you, don't go there anymore. But God says, that's not crazy. Do it a third time. Worship. Worship me again. Just worship. And this is how it looks like. They poured water in it the first time, the second time, the third time. And obedience sets an altar of worship for God to be ready to move in this church, to move in your lives. And then what happened? What did, what did Elijah tell God? Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people, the Israelites, the nations, this church may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Lord God, give them a sign. Lord God, the prophets, the 450 prophets did everything they got, but Baal, they didn't answer it. But now, Lord, in just one cry, in just one word, Lord, could you just give us a sign and let this altar set on fire, set it ablaze. And what happened? Amazingly, this altar was set ablaze by the Lord. This is what happened. Fire came from heaven down to the altar that Elijah prepared. Down to that altar. They gave their obedience there. They gave their worship there. And wow. Fire from heaven came down. And how did that happen? In verse 38 it says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. They, God licked it up. The very thing we thought was ridiculous, the very thing that we thought was crazy, we don't understand why are we going to put water when we want it to set a blaze or set on fire? Oh, wow. God licked it up. God hears your obedience. He wants this kind of worship that comes from our obedience. And He accepts your worship. And what is God telling us right now? Your wholehearted obedience moves God to do the impossible for your life. Today, you may have that impossibility in front of you. But we're here in two opinions, God or the world. Sometimes, kaya pala hindi tayo maka-worship, kaya pala walang mangyari sa buhay natin. Why? Because we're standing in the middle of it. We're standing, ano ba, sundin ko ba yung world? all the temptations of the world, yung mga pinaglalaban natin sa world, lalaki ba yan, babae ba yan, is that money, is that your business, to all the world, that's why we're in the middle and God couldn't just do the impossible for your life. God could just not perform the miracle in your life. Why? Because we're here. But could we decide today? Decide today? No. I choose you, God. I obey you, God. I'm going to take off the world. I'm going to choose you. From this day forward, I'm going to wholeheartedly obey you that you, you may move mightily in my life today. Hallelujah. And what happened in verse 39, and when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord is God. He is God. The Lord is God. He is God. They were just amazed with God's presence. They were just consumed by God's presence. And they could not say anything more about it. The Lord is God. He is God. He is God. He is your God today. And everyone believed in the Lord. But the battle is not yet over. This is the battle, the final battle where it all began a while ago. So what happened in verse 41 to 43, it says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up 
eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. God is telling you right now, God is telling your life right now, God is telling your church right now, today is the end of the dryness of your life. For the past days, for the past weeks, for the past months, we felt the dryness. I myself felt the dryness last week. So hard to worship. It's hard, so hard to give my praise. I'm not in the mood. And maybe some of us right now have been feeling this for years, for months. Dryness. Nothing's happening. But God says, God says, it will end today. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Do you believe in it? Dryness will end today. So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. He really, he really bowed down to the ground because this is, this is how we welcome God's presence in our lives. Bow down. This is how we welcome the Lord in this church. Bow down. Bow down in worship. Why? Because this man, this man of God, Elijah, even Christians feel dryness. Even leaders feel dryness. Even us feel drought. We're not exempted from it. And Elijah was experiencing that three years of dryness and he wants to just get out of that dryness. And he went there. He worshipped the Lord. He wants God's presence, just like you and me today. And said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. Look, look at the sea because they're on top of the mountain. This is, this is their view. Look at the sea. Is God's sign there already? I, I'm waiting. I want God's presence today. Is He there? Is God here? Is God's presence here? Then the, then the, then the servant came back and said, So he went up and looked and said, Ah, oh, Elijah, there is nothing. There is nothing. Eh. Uh, wala eh. Uh, I looked around, I used my binoculars, and there's nothing, Elijah. And Elijah told the servant, no, go again. Go again, because today, God promised He's going to send the rain today. Today, the dryness will end, the drought will end in our lives, and we're not going to leave this mountain until we experience God's presence today. We're not going to leave this position. We're not going to miss it this time. We're not going to get out. So go again. And, then, and he went back. The servant went back. And there's nothing. No, go again. Go again. No, go again. Go back. That the things in Lord today. Go again. Go back. Go back. To the point that it is already God telling you. Maybe God is the one telling Elijah to go again. Go again today. Go again. Today, you go again. Because this is what the Lord is telling us. This is what God is telling us right now. Go again. Because what is God telling you? I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you today. I'm coming. And what happened next in verse 44, it says, And it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. Ah, Elijah, Elijah, there's this, there's this cloud as small as, as a man's hand. There's this cloud. There's this cloud, Elijah. Eto na. Here it is. Here is God's presence. Here is God's presence today. Here is God's presence and God says, and he said, Go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Sabi niya, salubungin mo na yung presence si Lord. Andito na yung presence si Lord. Salubungin mo na. God says, now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind. And there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Pag si Lord ang kumilos, pag si Lord ang nagsabi, Inding hindi kanya bibiguin. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And God's presence is in this place. 
God's presence is in this place. And God is telling you right now, worship. Do it the first time. Worship. Do it a second time. Worship. Do it a third time. And I'm going to let you experience my presence. And today is going to be a different kind of Sunday. This Sunday, God will be in this place. And the dryness of your life will end today. As the worship team sings his song, God is inviting you to go again. God is inviting you to go again. And God is inviting you today. Pwede ba lahat tayo pumunta dito sa altar ng Panginoon? Pwede po ba tayo lahat ay let's go out of our seats and let's worship God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sige po, lahat po tayo ay lumapit. Lahat, lahat po tayo ay kumita. Let's just experience God's presence today. Hallelujah. Sige po tayo po lumapit. Everybody lumapit pa po tayo. People are coming from the back. Open the floodgates of heaven. Sige po. We're gonna worship God today. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open the floodgates of heaven.
Sing this from our hearts. Let's raise up our hands to God. Both our hands. Sing like you really want God's presence today. If you want God to move. If you're desperate. You could cry it out today. Sing it from our hearts. Let it rain. God is here. People are crying today. You could kneel it down today. Could bow it down. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Sing it with all your hearts. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Go again. We're gonna go again. You feel God's presence. You cannot deny it today. Open the floodgates. Go again. Go again. Let it 
Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Go again. Let it God rain. God is here. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let's go again. Let it rain.
this place, God. And once again, with our voices, we sing. We sing for the name of Jesus. Let it rain. Come on, church. Let it rain. We cry out for the rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Come and search. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Come and search. We can sing it a little louder. Let it rain. Let it rain. Yes, God, hear Christ, God. Open to the light gates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, Jesus, rain in this place, the gates of heaven, God, is Jesus, let it rain, come on church, can you sing it for Jesus, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, Jesus. Open the floodgates. No church, if you're expecting for the rain, can we put our hands up? Put our hands up to Jesus and reach out. Come on, can we reach out our hands to Him and cry out that God? your rain, Jesus. We want the rain of your friends, Jesus. God, open up the gates of heaven. Open it up and pour your presence to your people. Pour it down.
Church, if you believe that there is a miracle, you sing it a little louder for Jesus. With our hands lifted high, we sing. Church, can you once again sing it a little louder? Our God is moving. Our God is healing. You can step into the waters and receive. There's a miracle for all who will believe. Our God is moving, yes, God, just move. Our God is healing. You can step into the waters and receive. There's a miracle for all. There's a miracle for all who will believe. 
Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Here are your dry people, God. We are dry, Lord God, and weary. And we are just in need of you, Lord. 
just your presence, God. That's why we came here, Lord. It's for you. And today, all we need is you. All we want is you, God. That's why we lift up our hands today. So we surrender, God. We surrender. Just surrender it all. For we're tired, Lord God, of nothing happening. Nothing happening. Nothing happening. And we go again, Lord God. Nothing will happen again, Lord. We're tired of that, God. We're tired of it, Lord. And you are the only solution, Lord God, to our problems, God. You're the only one we desire today is just your presence. And we're going to worship you. Worship you again. Worship you all over again. Because that's what you want us to do today. Lord God, thank you for your wonderful presence. Lord God, we're not going to cry, Lord God, if it's just us, Lord. We're crying today. We're bowing down today because you are in this place. Because your presence is in this place. And in us, Lord, we know, Lord God, that there's still heaviness in our hearts today. There's still dryness in us today. We could not deny that. But you said, Lord, today, dryness will end in our lives. Today, the drought will end. Just this very moment, God. And could I invite everybody to raise our hands again to the Lord? And could you just join me in this prayer? Pray this prayer with all of your hearts. Like you really mean it. Like this is really your decision to make. Pray it sincerely in your heart today. Let's pray this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I come before you today. I come before, before you today. today with much humility. With much humility. I have nothing to boast. I have nothing, nothing to boast. I am nothing. I am nothing. I could do nothing. I could do nothing. And Lord, today. And Lord, today. Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. For always halting. For always halting. For always stopping. For always stopping. At two opinions. At two opinions. You, God, you, God, and the world. And the world. But, today, but today, I decide, I decide to, follow you to follow you all the days, all the days of, my life, of my life. That you may do, you you may do, do the, impossible the impossible in my life, in my life and in my family. And, in my family. and, today, and today, I decide, I decide to give Give my wholehearted, my wholehearted obedience, obedience, because you are, because you are the one, the one true, true and living God, and, living God. and I will worship you, and I will worship you all the days all of my life. Hallelujah! We'll just give God our very best clap offering. And I'm just to pray this, pray for you today, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just invite your presence, Lord God, to continually flow in their lives. Lord God, this is not the end. Lord God, this is just the beginning, Lord God, of a wonderful thing that will happen in us today. Lord God, it's not an accident. That's why we are here. Some of the first-time visitors are here, Lord God, and it's not an accident, Lord God, that they are here really feeling and receiving your presence today. And Lord God, we just want more and more and more of you just more and more of you in our lives and Lord God it's not gonna stop today later Lord God we're gonna go again and worship you tomorrow Lord God we're gonna go again and worship you Lord God on Tuesday and Wednesday Thursday Lord God we're gonna go again and worship you all the days of our lives Lord God we're gonna go again and worship you because you said you're gonna come for us you're never gonna leave us nor forsake us and we're going to experience your mighty, mighty presence in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
today before we end, could we just give lift up our tithes and offering to our God? This is also an act of worship for Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. invite everybody to please stand up. Did you feel God's presence today? Do you love God's presence? And if you love God's presence, could just give God our very best clap offering again. <laughs> Hallelujah. They could just lift up our tithes and offering to our God. And this is our act of worship. And God says, worship, worship, and worship me again. Because God loves to, to use you God loves to do more in your life. And all we need to do is worship. Lord God, we lift up our tithes and offering to you. Lord God, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for moving in our midst. And Lord God, come in, Lord God, bitin pa, Lord God, for your presence, Lord God. But it's not going to stop today, Lord. It's just a start, Lord. And later, Lord God, we're going to worship you in our houses, Lord God. When we go home in our personal devotion, Lord God, we're going to worship you, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, all we want is you. All we need is you. Lord God, we love you so much, God. And Lord God, thank you for this blessed day. Lord God, thank you for the people who came here. Lord God, they came here for you. And Lord God, we just want to celebrate your goodness in our lives, Lord God. And Lord, we have our own lives. We have our families, Lord God. And Lord God, we ask for you, Lord God, to bless them as well abundantly. Let the rain, Lord God, be received by all the people here, Lord. Your rain is abundant, Lord God, and kaya mo, Lord God, kami bless all at the same time. And Lord God, thank you for this wonderful Sunday. Lord God, we claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless everyone. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week ahead. Hallelujah.